Namaste. Welcome to the Ilonga Yogi Podcast. My name is Kate, and Ilonga, which means I'm a native of Iloilo City. It's a small and beautiful place in the Philippines, and I'm a certified yoga instructor and a studio owner here in Iloilo City as well. I share content on yoga, mindfulness, fitness, mental health, self care, and wellness. So for today's episode, I wanted to share with you the most important lessons I've learned at 30. And I'm so excited about this one. Uh, Before we get into it, I want to let you know that I teach classes both at my yoga studio and online. And if you're interested in taking a class with me, just head on over to ilongayogi.com slash body love yoga studio. You'll see the schedule and the rates there, and you'll also be able to book right from there as well. So going into our topic today, I have prepared for this for quite some time. I think for the entire month of February, I sat down several times trying to figure out how I can compress everything that I've learned at 30 (laughs) into just... Uh, a few words, almost sort of a few words. And I really do hope that by doing this, you who's listening can also learn from that. Uh, Maybe there are a few things here that you already know, or maybe there are some things here that you don't really understand yet or haven't really experienced yet. And I hope that through this episode, you can kind of see where what what i've learned and understand what i've learned through the years and maybe even use it in your life and maybe it can change your life in some positive way too so that's why i'm very happy about this episode even though i haven't started it yet technically and um you know i've loved getting older through the years i've always said that um and who knows maybe that will bite me in the butt in the future but honestly i love getting older and i've always had this sentiment since i was younger and i know that that is probably more normal when you're young because you you're so excited to become a teenager and then you're so excited to come come of age and get to do the things that you want to do and all but for me it's more of being excited about the woman that I'm becoming as I'm growing older because who I was a year ago is again really far from who I am now and I always love growing and and changing and evolving through the years and so that's why this is very meaningful to me and I believe I did a similar video last year when I turned 29 Um, I'm not so sure if I privated the video but if you ever came across it then it's there but if it's not then uh, I think I've repeated a few of the lessons here as well like uh, you might encounter them here again so it's fine if you weren't able to see it if it is online if it is on my YouTube channel then you can go ahead and check it out so I guess uh, there's no more time to waste (laughs) and I have nothing else to say let's jump right into it so the most important life lessons I've learned at 30 and you'll notice that the list is kind of categorized to a few parts uh, a few different um, parts in my life Uh, one for like family for friends the things that I've learned through my relationships with others uh, in career in money and in myself and in my purpose so maybe you'll you'll feel that or um, well not feel but you'll get a sense of that as you listen and also, if you want to read this while I while listening, I also posted this on my blog, ilongayogi.com. Anyway, the first one would be the way I treat myself, speak to myself, and love myself will be the same exact energy I will attract. I remember when I came across this for the first time. Um, of course, this is not the exact same words that I, I think, read or heard. I don't know. But um, one of those. <laughs> and it was pretty mind-blowing to me. Like It really uh, enlightened me. And ever since then, I became very mindful. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hate that when that happens on a podcast, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> ever since then, I've become very mindful in the way I spoke to myself the way I I treated myself took care of myself um, because I didn't want especially when I was single I didn't want to attract that same energy whenever I date or whenever I get into a new relationship and so it's it was easier for me to do that 
through dating than it was like for friendships or for family. And I think that's still something I kind of struggle with, but uh, safe to say that that has worked for me, <laughs> not because I'm in a relationship now that's very healthy and all, but because um, I have learned to to see myself in a different light and to really take care of myself and speak to myself as best as I can um, as much as possible. The next would be to be unapologetic in dating. Set boundaries, do not accept anything less than you deserve or make up excuses to cover up red flags. It isn't worth it. So I remember back then there was a time when I just was very desperate. It was just very desperate energy um, because I guess I was really lonely. I really wanted and craved for some sort of connection and attachment. And uh, as I went from relationship to relationship, that's where I grew the most, where I learned the most in my life. That through my relationships, through dating is where I where my eyes were open, where I got to know myself way more and um, it has really changed my life. So it took several heartbreaks, very painful heartbreaks to make me finally realize that this time around when I date, I will be unapologetic. I do not want anything less to enter my life anymore because it's not worth it. You know, you just start to realize that I don't want to waste any time. I know what I want. I want to find a relationship eventually. You know, it's not like I'm forcing it or anything. I want to settle down. I want to have a family. I want to have a good partner. And if that's what I want, I think it's important that I do not make up any excuses just to cover up red flags. It's important that I do not settle for anything less. So ever since then, I guess it kind of worked out for me. <laughs> Next, if you don't know what you need in a relationship or want in a relationship and see relationships as a way out of loneliness, you are not ready for a partner and will only end up in a toxic place. I think that um, that's very familiar to most of us, especially, well, what was that word? Especially if you are listening to this right now and you're into self-care, self-love and all. Um, I think that you have to know how to love yourself first before you look for that in anybody else. But that's easier said than done because it's so easy to to look for that for for to look for some sort of security in others and I think that even until now there are times when I still act that way but uh, I have to remind myself that my partner is not there to fill any void and my partner is not there to to help me feel less lonely or to help make me ha make me more happy or to bring me anything you know he's there to support me to to encourage me and to just be my my partner in this journey that's all you know and so it would be good if I learn things from him and if he learns things from me. But other than that, he's not there to fill a void. And so as much as possible, I try to remind myself to to be detached, you know, because not everything is for forever and people grow, people change. And sometimes it's a lot painful to experience that in relationships like dating, love relationships with a significant other. So. I always remind myself this, especially when I was still single, that my partner, whoever I'm looking for, should not fill any void. Next, honoring who you are and the way you work is the best thing you can do for you and your mental health. I believe I've had several episodes already and several vlogs where I've been crying or very emotional about just my productivity. and. I have struggled with that for the longest time and I think it became harder when um, when the studio was starting to kind of flow on its own and operate on its own well enough you know and I started looking at my life and then when I started meeting new people here and then for some reason comparing the way I work with them and then of course as I got older it's like you you start to realize that Who's going to support my family? Who's going to take care of my family? How can I support them? You know, all the all the pressure. For some reason, I just realized that, and then it became it became hard for me to accept that the way I work is just the way I work. It is what it is, you know. And I'm not talking about 
allowing myself to be lazy, allowing myself to slack off or anything. But um, there's, you know, with me, the way I work, I don't, it's not efficient for me. And I don't work well if I overdo it or if I work like from morning to evening and I force myself to just sit on, on a on a desk and work nonstop. I don't work well whenever I'm not like my own boss. I don't work well with others, honestly. And um, I don't work well when I push myself to exhaustion. Like if I, you know, work every single day for this many hours for the sake of money, I will burn out and I will be depressed AF, like really, really triggered and just just can't function and and there there have been days when i've done that and i have always it's always been the same thing again and again like just feeling very burnt out and it's been useless because when i'm burnt out and feeling depressed it's like this whole this whole thing where and i have to pick myself back up and then and then rebuild rebuild myself rebuild my routine again and it's that's more exhausting and so when I realized that, especially through the pandemic and up to now, I, need, I learned how to honor just the way I work. I found my own rhythm and it's not traditional, but honestly, it gets more work done and I feel better about myself. I feel like I'm taking care of my mental health. And, you know, it's kind of ironic because there's been news around wherein people are actually like fighting for for a four day week or like for just a few hours of work per day and that's very interesting to me because that's exactly how I am like I cannot function if I work five times five days a week non-stop for like eight to ten hours that's not how I function and so um, again honoring who I am and the way I work has been the best thing that I've done for my mental health next money will always come and go no matter how much you earn there will always be more money to earn there will always be more things to buy and attaching your worth or happiness to your income will never make you feel happy so i think that you know when you're young and you're trying to earn a living and uh or it's like your first time to earn your own money uh it gets really exciting you know i remember and i think uh, some of us, you know, who are definitely more privileged, and I say that with as much humility as possible, when we earned our first paycheck, we just spent it. We just spent it on the most useless of things. And I, I admit that I am very irresponsible when it comes to my money, even up to this day. It's kind of still something that I'm working on. It's, it's a process and it take, it's taking time <laughs> but i'm learning i'm getting better at it and one thing that i have learned the most is that there has been this part of me where especially now that i live in a smaller city compared to manila and because i gave up um what my previous job was i earned way less there has been a time where i probably earned like just five thousand a month um sometimes not even any thing at all <laughs> and it's been hard for me to accept that because i grew up spoiled unfortunately very much spoiled and that was my mom's love language so i grew up that way and uh so i never really had to struggle around like money or anything that i wanted and you know my mom she loves fancy things and she kind of just showered me with all of that and growing up in that way really just tainted the way i i lived and saw money and spent money you know i thought that and felt like oh it's like uh, i can easily like ask more you know and that's not the case now that i'm 30 i definitely know that's not the case money does not come that easily at all <laughs> and people work really really hard for money they really work so hard sometimes way beyond their they are capable just to earn to earn enough to feed a family enough to just eat three meals a day and it's been um it's been a struggle to to accept that and then it's been a struggle to change all of my ways like to change so much of who i am 
so that I finally learn to live within my means, to be more responsible. So that shift took a toll on me. You know, of course, it's like asking a lot from somebody to, from someone who has had so much and then have nothing. Uh, that's a kind of hard transition <laughs> compared to someone who's had nothing and then now have a lot. Um, you know what I mean? Like that was my that was where I had a hard time, and so. There came a point where I felt like, you know, right now um, I am earning way less than I did when I was in Manila. And when I was in Manila, I was earning so much more and and really just spending my money on useless things sometimes and not being responsible about it. And still, I remember just feeling unhappy. So then it came to me that it dawned on me that it doesn't really matter like how much I earn. It doesn't really matter how much money is in my bank account. It's really important that I detach like my value to that and my happiness to that because again it's just never going to make me feel happy because even if I earned way more now I would still probably feel like it's not enough or still want to buy more things and it's like this cycle this very toxic cycle that'll just get worse and worse and worse and so that's why I have learned that, you know, money is meant to come and go. It's meant to flow in and flow out. But um, no matter how much money comes in, how much money goes out, it's important that I know who I am and I am happy with where I am and I'm responsible with my money and I can enjoy it and indulge a little bit when I want to with balance. Um, and that's more important than anything else. Next, keep track of your finances. It's not easy, but with time and practice, you'll get used to it. It's important to be financially mindful and responsible. So when I grew up, I was not taught how to actually like break down your money and your budget and the your income and savings, all of that. Like I had to learn that as a 20 plus year old already maybe like just a few years ago that i think i did a video on my youtube channel on how i wanted to budget my money and like save and everything because i never learned that at all when i was younger and so uh, it was hard for me to adjust to that way of living um to feel like I can't spend even though I know I have money, but it has to be like in put in my savings. That was kind of hard for me to to wrap my head around for some reason. And so now I've learned that I need to keep track of my finances. I know it's so much easier to just say like, mm, I can skip it and not do it. But um, I know that it's harder to to catch up on that afterwards and and try to keep track of your money and if you miss like just a day or two or more it gets you get just get lazier and lazier so i've learned to really keep track of all my finances no matter what <laughs> because it makes me feel more at ease and more at peace to be financially mindful and responsible so that is very very important to me next through the years, your purpose will shift and it will lead you to a higher version of yourself. Getting there, you'll feel a little lost and not good enough, but it will all come to you eventually when the time is right and you are finally ready. So that last part of it is very um, important to me too because it says that when the time is right and you are finally ready that's when things shift in your life towards where you really want to be or where, where you really want to go and um you find a different purpose and the thing is um i've always had like the same purpose for most of my life until i turned 30 and that was very that was like an interesting journey for me because I never thought that that would ever happen. I, um, I only thought that that could possibly happen whenever like I'm a mom or something. But um, I don't know. I, I guess I just didn't think that my purpose would shift. I always thought that my purpose would always be like to serve others in some way to change the world, kind of that kind of <laughs> purpose. But of course, in my own way, like as a yoga teacher with the things that I do, uh, towards mental health awareness um, through the these podcasts through the content I create because I love creating content so I've always thought that it would be somewhere along the lines of that and then when I hit 30 like I've mentioned uh, in another episode 
I kind of had like a slight adjustment in my career, like a new path, new responsibilities came in. And then I found a whole different purpose now. And that journey of finding a different purpose has been has been um, very exciting, but also not easy all, as well. Like it's been challenging a little bit, but I like realizing that I don't need to have one purpose for the rest of my life. Like as I grow older, my purpose will shift. And that's an exciting thing. Uh, I'll start to find a different purpose and then that will help open doors uh, that uh, of different experiences, newer experiences, newer opportunities. And most importantly, it'll help me discover different parts of myself that I have never discovered before. Um, so that's very... Uh, something that I like, I, I look forward to. Basically, that's that's what I want to say. It's something that I definitely look forward to. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. You are good enough, and you are doing enough. This is just a mantra that I need to tell myself every single day. Uh, it's still not easy for me, especially when it comes to the ups and downs of my emotions and my mental health it's still not easy especially now that i'm older it's honestly just the same thing over and over again so what i'm trying to say is it was interesting because on my birthday somebody greeted me and told me that um happiness or joy looks really good on you and it's because i posted a photo uh for my birthday and you know of course i looked very happy i, I was very happy and all but that person has seen me at like one of my lowest too, like a low sad phase of my life and i remember during that time i was always like posting a lot of sad things i was just like in a bad place and so they probably saw that and um knew my story and all and to me when i got that message I, it's like i wanted to tell them that you know honestly things are still the same you know I still feel the same sadness that I have years ago when you knew me when we were you know still together and all um and it hasn't changed it's just that I've learned to handle it better I've learned to to see it in a different way now that it doesn't have to control me so this reminder this mantra of you know don't put too much pressure on yourself you are good enough you are doing enough it's just like something that i tell myself every day when i need it because i know that this illness or condition i don't want to call it an illness because it's it's not as bad as that For, to me it's a part of me and so this this condition, this side of me is always going to be there and that's okay. Um, and because of that, I don't have to pressure myself too much. And because of that, I just need to, to be proud of the little things that I do every day because that's better. That's uh, so much to ask someone who almost sometimes is fighting the will to live. Um, so there. <laughs> It's not always easy for you to keep long-lasting friendships. You're afraid to get too attached to people you love, but it's okay. The friends who stay with you through the years will make you realize that you deserve to be loved. Nourish those friendships there that are still going strong. Cherish those who always see the good in you, support you, and inspire you. So it's very hard for me to again like cultivate those friendships uh, in my life because I've just had so many bad experiences with friendships in the past. Um, and, and, you know, it's also safe to say it's because I had toxic attachment, uh, attachment styles as well. So I get that. <laughs> and I also know that it's, I'm also to blame. But again, it's just that I've had a lot of bad experiences. So I've naturally learned to cope with pushing people away or just keeping a very very safe distance <laughs> from others and so I know that is not an excuse at all and so I've been trying to learn to appreciate the friendships that I still have now 
I don't like having too many friends. I only have just a few that I can count on my hands that really mean a lot to me, that have really, especially those who really stuck with me through these years. You know, because there are many, many times where I feel like I am a terrible person. Like, who would even want to be in my life? <laughs> like, who would even want me? Because I'm such a horrible, emotional, like, toxic person. I don't even understand. How would anyone like even care about me? And yet, you know, these people are here. And even with all the things that I have done, they still choose to see me as one of their, like, for example, like most amazing friends or most inspiring friend ever. And, and you know, I, I can't even like accept that or admit that to myself. But it's just so weird for me to say that. But I've learned to openly receive that to openly accept these these friendships and and to nourish those people who see me that way um and to also like be present for them to be there for them in in the best way that i know and to give them a part of me too wherein they feel like i'm i'm there for them i'm here for them i'm willing to listen to them you know because because i don't want to lose that no matter what because these people see something in me they see the good in me that i can't see in myself at all and they see how how um how i love and how i care and how i how i i don't know what else to say but you know what i mean like that's how i feel i feel very grateful for them for seeing the best in me even when I really don't see it at all. <laughs> and um, I'm learning to, instead of being afraid of that, to embrace it fully and to welcome it in my life and to actually take care of them too and take care of those friendships too because they inspire me. They, they inspire me every single day. So there's that. <laughs> it's not easy to keep those friendships, but uh, I'm working on it, you know, and I'm trying my best. Do not burn bridges. It may be your initial response to anything that triggers you, but just take a step back, recenter yourself, and let it go. So again, one of my coping mechanisms was always to, to burn bridges, to push people away, to shut people out right away, like instantly. And that's not good. <laughs> that's not healthy at all, as we know. And, um, you know, now that I'm older and I look back on the friendships that I did do that, uh... I, I'm realizing that that yes, maybe during that time, that's how I coped, and that's what I needed probably at that time. And and I look back and I feel a little sad about that 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 had to happen. But at the same time, I also need to forgive myself for for that way of coping, and forgive them for whatever hurt they may have caused me at that time. Forgive myself for whatever hurt that I have caused them to, knowing that, again, you know, when you're younger, you don't know any better. And that goes for both sides, for everyone. And so now the best thing I can do as I move forward is to not do that again, to not burn bridges, to to just be kind to them and, and, for, and learn to forgive myself, forgive them no matter what. Um, taking a step back and like taking a deep breath before I say anything that I regret or do anything that I regret I think that's very important so again do not burn bridges there will be years when you feel so lonely and depressed you'll think it's because there's something wrong with you but you'll eventually learn your way around your mental and emotional needs um, there have been years yes times in my life where I felt incredibly alone like just so alone and very sad very very sad and now that i'm 30 and i with where i am in my life i've learned that um i've learned how to maneuver through the ups and downs of my mental health and that has helped a lot like that l being more mindful and being more aware of uh, of my social battery, of how I'm feeling, my energy, my my emotions, how it how it shifts. Learning how to ride that now, and uh, using tools that can help me 
can help me find more balance to help can help me find a little bit more peace in between or ground myself have been very very helpful and so now um I know when to take a step back and and withdraw and be on my own to to make me myself feel better, feel recharged, and then I know when to to reach out to others and in a healthier way. I know when to socialize with others, to be more open, and just to to ride the waves of my energy and my emotions and my mental health, basically. So that has been very helpful for me. Next, setting boundaries in every relationship is a must. Family, friends, and love life. So before, I didn't know how to set boundaries in my love life and in friends. So that's where I got very toxic. And when it came to family, I would always um, push them away or, or not listen to them or just be like a like rebel against my family a lot and i think it's because my family also didn't know how to set any boundaries even until this day i see it (laughs) in many ways i see how my family does not know how to set boundaries and that's not me saying that they're terrible or anything it's just that they were never taught that they never learned that that wasn't a thing before uh and so now i'm learning that i need to set those boundaries and teach my family how to set boundaries in a healthy way and i think that's very very important and it's something that is very important to me whenever i become a mom and a parent uh how i need to set boundaries and same with my partner right now it's important that we both have boundaries too there are some things that he is not comfortable with me doing for example checking his phone and i respect that um and same with me there are some things that i do not feel comfortable with him seeing or checking or whatever that is and that's that again is is okay and same with friends learning how to set boundaries with them too that are healthy not too much wherein i push people away or can't get close with anyone but just enough wherein wherein i can still live my life they can still live their life but we can also be there for each other whenever needed so i think it's very very important to learn how to set boundaries and even with yourself knowing when you're bound where your boundary is when it comes to whatever it is in your life whether it's work or home or with um money or with other different habits that you have it's very important to know these boundaries to set those boundaries and to honor them as well next you do not need the approval of your family going down that path will never be enough and will only lead to unhappiness so this one is a spicy one for me because right now i think this is where i'm triggered the most because i again have this new role uh and this new responsibility and it is in terms of a family business there's this ego in me that wants to prove that i do deserve this that i am I am the right person for this and that I can do more than you expect, you know, like a perfectionist and all these different things. And literally like just today and last night, I realized how that's going to set me up to failure every single time and that will only lead me to unhappiness. And so this is a very special one because I have just recently learned this and realized this in me that I do not need and I should not seek the approval of my family at all, at all, at all. No, 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 no. I may want to so badly, but I must not. Um, It just goes to show how insecure I feel in myself when I try to seek approval for my mom or for anyone else. When I, it's okay if I get triggered, especially when it hurts my ego on this particular um topic but not letting myself react because of it is very important to me now and that's something that i cannot do yet but i'm working on it and will work on it next you will feel like you're worthless compared to others who are able to support their families in a traditional way but you will find that your you will find your way through the uncertainty and will be able to support your family in a more meaningful and mindful manner So my mom, she is the breadwinner of this whole entire family. We would be nowhere without her. That's 100% fact. 
those are facts. Um, and there have been many times because I am an only child and I am her daughter wherein I felt pressured to live that expectation as well, to live up to that, you know, and through the years and because of just how how very different I am from her, which naturally, yes, of course, nobody should be uh, expected to be the same with their parent uh, or take on roles uh, just as their parents. Um, yeah, I, I had a hard time accepting that. And because of that, I would always put a lot of pressure on myself that I need to support my family somehow. And now that I'm at this age where most of my friends are working or let's say have just gone abroad to work abroad and become OFWs and of course they're earning so much more than I am or could ever imagine and they're able to support their family and sometimes when I hear stories of how they're able to like buy their parents this and that or do this for their family like I feel terrible <laughs> you know like I feel happy for them like that's so exciting that's so great and then I then I look at myself and I'm like man I wish I could do something like that but I just am not capable. I'm not capable emotionally <laughs> to do that because I know that I have like a limit and and it just doesn't come easy to me to be that role, to take that on that role. It's like too much for me. And and like I, I look at them in awe, like h how they're able to, to survive like long hours and working so hard and being away from family and just like the mental struggles i could never do that i would i would just go crazy honestly and so it's um something that i wish i could do but i can't and instead of feeling worthless about it every single time i have to remind myself that I'm never meant to be like my mom who will earn so much and be able to to give back to family like tenfold, like way more than we deserve, honestly. Um, and instead, I have a different role and I need to honor that and respect that, that this role that I'm taking is a more mindful role and a more meaningful one that I hope can actually change lives in a very positive way, not because of we're, we're all living comfortably, but because we're all more aware and enlightened and more, uh, more intuitive. And that way we can respect each other, learn to be more compassionate towards each other, learn to let go of old beliefs that are not really helping us move forward in any way and so that's the role that i'm willing to take and that's that's something that i need to accept and appreciate in myself next lean into what feels natural for you if it feels wrong or forced it may not be the right time for it yet or you're just not ready so this can go many different ways like you can look at it when it comes to relationships which makes perfect sense it's like common sense that if a relationship isn't working you're not going to force it um if a job isn't working you're not going to force it either um and so when it came to accepting this new role that i took this year it made me realize that wow if i tried to attempt doing this years ago i would probably like fail it would be a, a, a sorry for a, a lack of a better word but just a shit show honestly and now because i've learned i've grown and because it's the right time and i'm ready that's why this responsibility was passed down to me finally and that's okay you know and so that's something that I always go back to, especially when it comes to work and career and just anything along those lines, you know, if it doesn't feel like it's natural to me and if it doesn't feel like it's going to bring me any sort of fulfillment and satisfaction in any way, then don't force it. Just let it go and spare yourself of all the, of all the emotions and, and stress because it's a waste of time <laughs> and so that's something that i always again go back to because that matters to me a lot that things that are meant for you and are like perfect for you should feel 
pretty natural not not including like the transition phase but just like the the action itself or whatever that is just it should feel right so there <laughs> Next, there will be days when you want to give up, lean on others, and keep holding on. So like I said earlier, there will still be days like that. And I think before, you know, I thought that if I really worked on myself and focused on myself, that there will be a day wherein I feel like I'm a normal human being, no depression, no anxiety, nothing, just like normal and can function properly. And I'm just this, this machine who can work and and just be a good daughter and all these stuff all these other things but that's not the case um and so when i realized that of course it was it was sad for me to accept that but now i'm learning that it's it's a part of who i am and it actually will teach me so much more and so when those days come again because they will i just need to keep holding on you know, even if I have to drag myself and just to just so that I can show up and function, it's OK. Uh, it's it's going to be OK. It is what it is. So when those days come, I just need to hold on. Next, we're almost done. <laughs> Stay with me. Your dark side exists for a higher purpose. As messed up as that may sound, remember that every time you spiral into heavy negativity, even though it gets worse and worse every single time, you get up every time and choose to not give up every time. And with that comes a wave of learnings and realizations that make you better, stronger, and wiser. Every low point propels you to a higher version of yourself. So look at your dark side with compassion. So just like I mentioned, it was hard for me to accept that I was forever going to be bipolar <laughs> or forever just going to be depressed and have to go through these waves every single month, every single time. And, you know, of course, who wouldn't feel terrible about that? Like, I just felt like hopeless. But I realized that every single time I go through that wave, even if it feels like very dark and and so heavy every single time it feels like i'm even I, i'm at an even lower point than before i f somehow find a way to get back up e sometimes it takes me a while sometimes sometimes i'm able to snap out of it pretty quickly but no matter what there's always something that uh, comes out of it like it's there's always a, a learning a blessing a, a a realization a discovery whatever it is you want to call it there's always something good that comes out of something so so incredibly bad and not many people experience that and maybe that's great for them but this is what also makes me more mindful and more compassionate towards other people this is what helps me understand other people and what they're going through and makes me more of an effective daughter and and leader or, or, or boss uh teacher and many more partner friend all of those things and so that's something that i need to in a way celebrate instead of feel bad or like pity myself every single time Next, you are not perfect and you do not have to be. You are enough every day, even when you can't leave your bed and do anything useful, even when you binge and can't fit into your clothes anymore, even when you say or do the wrong things, you still deserve good things. You still deserve to be happy. So yes, <laughs> I am not perfect. You are not perfect. Nobody is meant to be perfect. There is no doctrine out there that that where I need to be the perfect daughter or where I need to be the perfect teacher. No, who I am is who I am. And if I were somebody else, like if I treated myself as someone I loved, like a friend or anybody, it doesn't even matter, like a stranger, I don't think I would even set unrealistic standards like that on them at all. You know, everything that they do... I would pretty much just tell them it's okay if today is the, is the day that you just feel 
like you're gonna stay in bed and and eat whatever you want because that's what makes you feel safe and secure and you just want to watch youtube and netflix all day long and you're not gonna work so be it right now doesn't mean that you are a horrible person because of that there is no need for me to compare myself to anybody else because i'm on my journey and there is no need for me to feel bad about myself for as long as again everything in balance everything in balance and so i should not see myself as worthless just because i'm tired and need a break <laughs> you know so again i'm not perfect you are not perfect you don't have to be you are enough exactly as you are and lastly to take it easy <laughs> have fun life doesn't have to be difficult enjoy every single time enjoy every day and so this one is also like a reminder i need to tell myself every day because i have a tendency to take things so seriously um to be to take things like personally to to get so emotional about the smallest things and and um you know that robs me of joy that i could have and i think that as a as filipinos we're very much known to to make light of everything no matter what we're going through there's always a way to find humor in it and i think that i ha have to tell myself this it helps with the friends that i have now they kind of remind me that you know have fun like live a little and sh loosen up uh who cares if this happens or that happens who cares what you do how you look like that all doesn't matter anymore just have fun with it and and that's something that i wanted to end this episode with and my blog post with as well like a very important lesson is to just have fun have fun and enjoy so wow that was it that was of all the lessons that i've learned that mean a lot to me and that have stuck with me and turning 30 is such an exciting time in my life I told myself on my birthday that this is just the beginning. Literally, this is just the beginning. And when I said that to myself, I was kind of like, wow, this is just like really the beginning, right? Because I lived my life and felt like I've gone through a lot and emotionally, mentally, just it's been heavy. And now to see my life that this is just the beginning of whatever is next because i've only lived 30 years on this planet and i have so much more to experience especially as a woman if i end up becoming a mom like goodness that's not even what i've gone through what i've been through is not even like a fourth of what i'll be experiencing when i become a mom you know and so that will be a whole new chapter and a whole different life a whole different version of me and so this is just the beginning and i hope that as you get older too as you go through life and experience different seasons you also see that as something exciting something that helps you grow into who you were always meant to be I hope that you see it as your path to finding your purpose every chapter in your life and and making a difference around you in the community you live with your family with your friends changing people's lives somehow and and creating good in this world and so I guess that's the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you can check out my blog, ilongayogi.com for more content like this and to follow me on my socials at ilongayogi. Thank you guys for listening. Take care and I'll see you next time.